Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship on this chilly, but uh, it's going to be a sunny day. It's going to be a beautiful day, but a chilly start and you got that extra hour of sleep. Does that feel good? <laughs> and uh, on this first day of the clock's going back, but boy, it'll be dark tonight, won't it? And it'll feel like winter all of a sudden. Well, it's a, we've got a lot of thing, themes going on today in worship. It is the first Sunday of November, and so it is the Sunday we mark uh, All Saints Day, and we honor those saints uh, that have passed in our church fellowship in the past year, and also uh, we'll mark those who have uh, died from this COVID pandemic and any names you would like to name in your heart this morning as we have a little litany for the saints in worship. It's also stewardship season, and if you've seen your emails and uh, got a little postcard this week to let you know, our theme this year is Together for Joy. And today's sub-theme under that is the joy of giving all. And it is a joy to be together, hence uh, the theme, Together for Joy. Uh, if you haven't already done so, make sometime during worship get these little uh, communion cups. And there's both a bread and a cup in the same uh, little cup there. And we'll celebrate communion a little later in our service that way. Name tags, we want to encourage everyone to get the name tags off that. Nice new name tag board out there, and uh, children are going to sing for us in worship, as well as our choir and other great music, singing the hymns of the faith, including that great hymn for All Saints Day, for all the saints. So we've got a full service planned for you, and let us now prepare our hearts for worship as uh, together when we hear the sound of those beautiful bells, stand and join in our call to worship. Too cold for the bells, I guess. <laughs> so go ahead and stand, and let's join in our call to worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. The sea, the mountains, the rivers, all creation praises God. Shouting for joy to the Lord.
Thank you for that beautiful singing of that great hymn. Let us pause and join together for our moment of confession and acknowledging our need for God's grace in our lives as we pray together first and then pause for a moment of silent and personal confession. Let us pray. Loving Creator, we admit that we like to put you into neat little boxes. The God of this, the God of that, the God of these people, but not of those people. We admit we make you too small. We admit we make you manageable. Forgive our short-sightedness, our self-limitedness, and our stubbornness. Enlarge our hearts, souls, and minds so that we let go of the need to define you, so that we can embrace the joy of letting you be the one who loves. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, we just sang that hymn, Come Sing, O Church, in Joy. We can sing in joy this morning because of the truth that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are indeed forgiven of all our sin. Amen. Christ be with you. Oh, Wonderful. Good morning. Well, I guess that was easy because children singing always brings me joy. Um, so Pastor Dale asked us to just sort of talk a little bit about what brings us joy when we come to church here. And um, I'm not sure how many of you know Joe and I or our family, but we left our last church um, searching for a place where our whole family was welcomed. We wanted a place that had a community of families, a place where our love of God, community, charity, social justice all met. Uh, we wanted a church that was inclusive and that loved children. Obviously, we've found that here at PCMK. But we find joy here in so many of the little things every day. Um, number one, Pastor Dale's sermons always hit the mark with us, always seemingly at the perfect time. We love the music. Um, we didn't plan this, but we love the organists. We have wonderful singers and musical talents um, here at church. We love watching our kids begin their spiritual journeys. Um, we asked our children this morning what brings them joy coming to church. One of them said all the coloring, and the other one said all the snacks. <laughs> I think he meant to say fellowship, but they're learning. Um, we love the ability uh, two weeks ago to share this church with our family who are not churchgoers, but they all loved being here. They loved the feel of the church. They loved Pastor Dale's sermon, um, and we got to share in the baptism of Mackenzie, which of course brought us joy. And lastly, but maybe most importantly, the fact that Joe and I can come here every week, we're very tired, <laughs> very overworked, and spend an hour in peace and quiet and meditation and prayer with all of you people while other wonderful parents and teachers take our children and teach them and care for them uh, provides us some much needed endless joy. So, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good morning. The scripture reading for this morning is Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44. You can find this on page 825 of your pew Bible. This is the story of the widow who gives her last mite to the church. Essentially, this is a teaching moment for Jesus' disciples. He tells them, it's not about how much money you give, 
It's about your love and commitment to the church and its ultimate mission. I'll read from the New International Version, Mark 12. Jesus sat down opposite the place where people were putting their offerings and watched as they put money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts of money. But a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins worth only a few cents. Jesus called his disciples together and said, Truly, I tell you, this poor woman has put more into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Walter, for that good reading of that familiar passage of scripture, the story of the widow's mite. The coin was called a mite and has come down to us that way. And uh, that scripture, did, I didn't choose that. That chose us. I was in the lectionary reading for today to start stewardship season. How appropriate the story of the widow's mite. Walter, you gave a nice sermon, too, uh, on the meaning of that text, which is essentially what I'll be sharing with you as well. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as you've heard, Together for Joy is our overarching theme for stewardship season here at PCMK this year. We chose the theme because it builds on last year's theme of Together in Hope. Last year, we were all holding on dearly to the hope of vaccines and better days ahead. This year, we are starting to experience what we could only hope for just months ago. We are together at last. We are together here in our sanctuary every Sunday morning. We have always been together throughout these months of pandemic in spirit and in purpose, but oh, it feels good to be together in person, to see each other, to greet each other, to hear our beautiful organ and music, to sing the hymns of the faith, uh, to gather around the word and share the bread and the cup. To watch babies or toddlers, as the case was recently, <laughs> get baptized. It's a joy to be together at last. So it makes sense. Our theme is together for joy. Over the next three Sundays, we will explore how being together for joy impacts our stewardship of our time, talent, and our treasure. This first week, we'll look at the story of the widow's might, and we'll call it the joy of giving all. Next week, our theme will be the joy of giving together. And the Pledge Dedication Sunday, two weeks today, our theme will be the joy of giving back to God. So you can say our sub-theme under Together for Joy today is the joy of giving. The joy of giving sounds like a commercial for Macy's or Amazon <laughs> these days to encourage early Christmas shopping, right? The joy of giving. They say you'll want to shop early this year because of that supply chain shortage we've all been hearing about, uh, hearing about, but it's getting ridiculous, isn't it? It used to be Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, was the day that you officially launched the Christmas shopping season, and now it's the day after Halloween. You know, Mariah Carey made that point in dramatic fashion this week. You may have seen that she smashed pumpkins with a candy cane saying, it's not too early to start singing her song or playing her song, All I Want for Christmas is You. Some people pushed back and said, no, it's way too early <laughs> to start playing that song. The joy of giving. I think we can all relate to that, right? The words of Jesus, he said that for us in this passage, it is better to give than to receive. I love giving a gift that my wife or children or friends truly treasure. I've experienced the joy of giving, and I imagine you have too. But what about the joy of giving all, giving everything? The widow's might, as the gospel story has become known, is the story of someone who gave all. It does not say 
specifically that she was joyful as she did it. But if there is joy in giving, then I would guess there's joy in giving all. This time of year, we remember those who gave all in service to their country. Here in the U.S., we have both Memorial Day in the spring and Veterans Day in the fall to honor those who have served in the armed forces. In Britain and uh, the Commonwealth nations like Canada and New Zealand and Australia, we have only one day to remember and honor. It's called Remembrance Day on November 11th, our Veterans Day. Originally, it was on that day to mark the armistice that ended World War I. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, and we wear poppies. In, I looked for them. I had some somewhere, and I couldn't find my poppies, my poppy to wear today. We wear poppies to remember them and to give thanks for their giving all for us. In the church, we have a Memorial Day or Remembrance Day. We call it All Saints Day. We remember those who died in the faith, and we honor their memory and their service to God and to church. My mother, as I shared earlier, died on November 4th near All Saints Day, so I always think of her and give thanks for her around this time of year. She really was and is a saint. Some saints throughout the centuries truly gave all and discovered there was joy even in giving their very lives. Fox's Book of Martyrs tells the story of martyrs like Perpetua and Felicity, who were some of the first Christians to die in the Roman Colosseum. And here's a quote that describes their joy in giving literally all. Quote, these two women were from different classes, these two women from different classes showed fortitude, determination, and remarkably even joy, joy, at the prospects of public humiliation and suffering. Several times they refused offers of acquittal and ignored pleas to save themselves. Together they clung to heavenly hope and to each other for endurance through the ordeal. Rather than acquiesce to Roman demands, they asked to be baptized while in prison. Perpetua stated, the dungeon is to me a palace. Amazingly, when Perpetua was told beasts would devour her, she and her companions returned to prison in high spirits at the prospect of death for the glory of God. Wow. <laughs> The joy of giving all takes on new meaning in that context. Perpetua and Felicity and the other martyrs truly gave all. They gave their lives and they even found joy in it. We think the day of the martyrs is long over, but those missionaries kidnapped in Haiti are people who joyfully gave all to serve and to share Christ's love with desperately poor people. I saw an article today where their families are praying for even the kidnappers as they pray for the release of their family members. And we should all pray tirelessly for their release, and we should pray for their kidnappers. The widow in the gospel story was poor, but it says she gave all, and I like to think she did it joyfully. She would sure be pleased to know that Jesus was so impressed that her story has come down to us through the ages as the ultimate stewardship sermon. Preachers have used and I would say misused this story to guilt people into digging deeper and giving more. Some preachers tell their people that Jesus is watching you just like he did in that gospel story and unless you give as much as that widow did you just aren't giving enough. And of course in that case you never can give enough because she gave everything. She gave all she had. Who really gives everything to the church or, or anything else? Sometimes it seems like we give all to the IRS, right? You've seen the joke about the one-line tax return? It simply asks, how much did you make last year? And then it says, send it in. That was supposed to be a joke. I thought there would be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny, that's right. <laughs> Too close to the truth. The story of the widow's might is one that makes us feel a little guilty. No matter how much we give to the church or other charities, we read this story and we feel cheap. We think we are generous with our resources, but in comparison to the widow, we are selfish. We are holding back. We are not giving all. So we are not experiencing the joy of giving all. But here's the deal. 
The story of the widow's mite tells us that giving all doesn't mean how much money we give, because the rich in that story were giving so much more. But it means giving from the heart. It means giving with abandon. It means giving with joy. Giving all means we recognize that everything we have belongs to God. We are simply stewards of it. Our material possessions, our family, and even life itself are gifts from God. We truly experience the joy of giving when we realize that anything we give was not ours anyway. So what are you going to give to the church next year? I should warn you that our 2022 pledge card is modeled after that IRS farm. Now, I hope you recognize this is a joke again coming up. <laughs> it's going to say, how much do you, are you going to make next year? And then the next line will be, send it in. <laughs> of course, that's not what Jesus is talking about in the story of the widow who gave all. Jesus is talking about giving of our whole selves, not just our money. And Jesus walked the talk. He gave his all for us. In a moment, we will come to this table in remembrance of that gift, the gift of his life, his love, his all. Together for joy. The joy of giving all. When we think of those who have given all, we should be grateful. We are grateful to those who gave all in service to our country we're grateful for those who gave all, even their lives, in service of the gospel. We're grateful for those who gave their all to this church in generations past. We're grateful the opportunity, for the opportunity now to give our all. We're grateful for the opportunity to experience the joy of giving all. Amen. Well, that hymn uh, echoed a lot of what we shared in this service. Aaron and Joe seemed to parallel a lot of what you said, as strangers become friends, and together, that last verse, together met, together bound, together for joy. The sun is shining out there, so come and enjoy some fellowship, get some food and refreshment, head out on the patio and take these masks off and enjoy some fellowship together. And then uh, remember to bring your coats and things for next week for our clothing drive for the midnight run and then we'll gather again next week and watch your email and uh, we'll send you a little little message a little thought for the day every day through this uh, through this uh, stewardship season and then go to the Facebook page and we can share ideas and have some fun with that as we are together now for joy so I receive this benediction may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and all God's people said amen, amen.